You know about the Millennium Development Goals. In the year 2000, the World Summit decided that we should have Millennium Development Goals for the benefit of the world. This was one of the greatest global efforts of care because the global community felt that it is their business and their responsibility to bring those countries which are below the standard up to the standards they should be. So they developed the eight millennium goals in 2000. Here we are in 2010. In spite of this great goodwill, not much has been achieved. So the Secretary General again called me, Ban Ki-moon, and I was in New York on the 8th of this month, in my other capacity, because I'm the chairman of the Global Alliance for ICT and Development. And he said, I want a way out. I want to demonstrate that we can do something. And I know that he knew that I had already a plan for how to put in effect and in, pro in, 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 in application the ICT technologies for development, which has not been done. It's only done in the countries that are developed. So we have excellent best practices, we have excellent techniques and theories, but we need to bring them into a program of action for those who need them. Therefore, what has happened now that in addition to him being the honorary chair and I'm the chief executive of the Global Alliance, he asked me to chair a new initiative called ICT Solutions Matrix for Development. We, I already started this progress, I, I mean, I, he, he, it's not something that he decided to do uh, out of the blank, because I have set up for the last six months a team of experts who looked into the various ICT technologies and how they can serve every aspect of the eight course, including education. We are in an education institution. And how can these enhance the development of education in any country in the world? And now I am chairing this exercise under his honorary chair, chairmanship. Now that's global care. And I am sure that the whole community of the world, I mean, the intentions when, when the Millennium Development Goals were set up were great. It was not a joke. It was not a, 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 a mis, mis, it was not intended to mislead the world. But somehow it was not put into any action plan, into a program. So what we have developed, and we are still developing, is a completely computer-aided program which uses virtual consultants and uses best practices for the virtual consultants in the computer to guide you and advise you on the use of various techniques for education, for food development industry, for, for every aspect, economy of course, etc. So that's, that's something we are working on and we hope to achieve uh, success. Uh, Albert Einstein says, the religion, true religion, true religion, is real living. Living with one's soul, with all one's goodness and righteousness, Albert Einstein. That's altruism. It is the feeling inside you that you want to be good, that you want to do good. And that's something we have to create in the, in the, in the culture of, of, of being caring. It's, and it's not just giving money. <coughs> Sheikh Halibah, by coming here, is exercising altruism. She takes the trip from all the way to come here to make a speech, to go back, to show that she cares about the subject of caring. It, 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 it doesn't mean giving money only, of course, giving money and giving education and training and capacity building is great, but sometimes a gesture can do a lot. And I, I tell you, for example, Her Excellency mentioned intellectual property. Abu Ghazal intellectual property now is the largest and leading intellectual property firm in the world. 
I'm not talking about the region. I'm talking globally. Altruism was at origin. When I started the firm in 1972, I went to Washington to try to get introduced to some clients in the, in the, in the, in the IP business. And I had a list which I collected. I didn't have a single client. And I had a list and I went to Washington. I happened, there happens to be an ambassador there for, of Kuwait State. His name is Sheikh Salim Subah Hassan. Sheikh Salim was a great friend. As a family friend, I had friends, I'm privileged with my friendship with the Kuwait family. And because I started my business in Kuwait, and I owe the success of our business to Kuwait. That's something I have to always repeat because out of, out of being uh, honest to the privilege of altruism of Kuwait State. Kuwait was a whole state. The whole state to me was an exercise of altruism. So when I went to Sheikh Salim to visit him at the embassy, he said, what are you doing here? I said, I'm going to, I want to start an intellectual property firm. 72, nobody spoke about intellectual property. In fact, I remember a great friend who was Ali Fakhro, Abu Shawki in Bahrain. When I spoke to him first about intellectual property, after I left, he talked to his colleagues. I always admired Talal al because I have known him to be an intelligent person, but something must have gone wrong with his brains. How is he going to own the mind? Ownership of mind, intellectual property. He said in a speech, in a public speech, 25 years later, Talal Ghazali was not mad, he was right. But when I went to Sheikh Salim and explained my objective, Sheikh Salim, how, where is the list of companies you want to see? I gave him a list of some 50 companies in Washington. He said, give me the list. You don't have to visit them, I will call them for dinner tonight. At the embassy. And I will introduce you to them. And so he did. And I had 50 clients, which probably if I visited, I wouldn't have had one of them. I had all 50 clients that night because of the altruism of Sheikh Salim Subah Hassan. And he did it because he cared, because he wanted to do something good. And it's not his business as ambassador of Kuwait. And it's not his business even as a friend. But he is a man who appreciated the value of caring. 